Hey everybody, welcome back to Web Inspect, the show for creative web developers. I am Timothy Miller, your host, and today we are talking about easy SSH access. Now, the immediate question from those of you who have dabbled in SSH but maybe are not super comfortable with it um, is why would you want to connect your server through the command line? And I hear you, my front end focused friend, and we will get into a few different reasons, but the big one for me at least is frustration-free deployments. Um, it really allows you to deploy um, easily and painlessly and effortlessly, which is a wonderful thing. Um, and we're gonna get into that in later videos. For now, we're just going to lay the groundwork, which is to get easy SSH access set up for our servers. SSH, if you don't know, is a cryptographic network protocol. Um, it is a way that you can connect to your server securely, even over an insecure connection. And this is a big deal because a lot of us these days work from coffee shops, we work from uh, co-working spaces, even from Wi-Fi networks at work. Um, you know, any sort of shared network is inherently insecure because anyone can kind of listen in on your requests, anyone who is has access to the same network that you do. That's not true of all networks, but they all have kind of varying levels of security. So it's always good to use encrypted requests both ways just to kind of cover all your bases. Now, before we get into this, I should note that some of this is going to be specific to the web host that I use, um, which is Media Temple, which is a good one that I recommend. But um, if you don't use Media Temple, then the basic technique here should still apply. Um, you'll just have to change some URLs and things like that. Um, but I'm going to try to kind of keep the Media Temple stuff at a high level so that anyone can use this video. So with that said, let's jump into it. Now, the first step for any sort of server that you pay for, because you don't have total access over a server that you don't own, is you have to make sure that your server supports it. So you'll just want to search for um, your host, whatever your host is, and SSH access. So if you use, say, Bluehost, you can, you can search Bluehost, SSH access, and Bluehost has an article here about how to how to do some of this stuff. And they will give you the specifics about how you do this with their host. Um, the, same, the same basic principles apply no matter what host you use, um, but some of, the, some of the little nitty gritty details might be a little different. So you'll wanna follow along with, um, with the article for whatever host you used. In my case, it is Media Temple. So I'm gonna search Media Temple SSH access and Here's the article for doing this with Media Temple. And I use grid shared hosting, so I'm gonna select that one. Now again, like I say, the basic principles are the same here. Um, the main thing that's going to be different between hosts is um, where you find the actual SSH URL. So in Media Temple, you have to look in your server settings and you even have to enable SSH enable to in order to make this work. So if you do use Media Temple and you haven't done this yet, then you should go through these steps. Um, if you use a different host, look for their article and see what you have to do to enable SSH and just dig up um, dig up your SSH URL and username and password. Make sure you've got those on hand because we are going to need those very, very soon. Now, once you figure out the details for your own host, um, like I said, you're going to need your server URL which is going to look something like this in the case of Media Temple. You're also going to need a username, which looks like this, and a password that you set up um, probably in the admin area of whatever host you use. So once you have those three things, then you have what you need to SSH into your server for the first time. Now, a lot of hosts will give you a URL like this or like this, where um, it's pretty easy to remember. It's just SSH and your username and your domain name or in this case, just your domain name twice. Um, so it's easy to remember, but in my experience, it doesn't always work. If you use a URL like this, ssh, example.com at example.com, and this doesn't work, um, I would recommend you specify a port number. And you can do that by just doing ssh-p, um, and usually it'll be port 22. Um, not always, I think Bluehost use, uses 2222, um, but it's going to be something like this. Um, and that just makes this command a little bit more robust. Um, it will work more often when you specify a port number. Um, and then you type your domain name, example.com at example.com. And that will essentially get you into your server. 
um, if you have these details right. It'll also ask for a password, which you will need. Um, so once you have that, then you will get something like this. So it's telling me that I do not have an SSH key set up currently, um, which is good because that's what we're going to learn how to do. So I need to type in my password. All right, once you get something like this, um, this shows you that you have successfully logged into your server for the first time. And now that we've logged in like this, uh, we want to make sure that we never have to do that again. And you know, it's not it's not that big of a deal to enter your password and to enter all these details every time you want to SSH into a server. Um, it's certainly doable. But if there's one thing I can teach you guys about programming, it's that you need to make everything as easy as possible for yourself. It's kind of an important skill to learn as a programmer is everything you can automate, everything you can um, make the computer do for you, you should do it because that frees up your brain to do the actual important work um, and the actual challenging work, which is programming. If you have to spend an hour every day just doing something like logging into servers, um, that's that's an hour that you could be spending actually doing programming work. Um, and it's just, you know, you want to make everything as frustration free as possible. Plus, remember the easy deploys that I mentioned at the beginning, at beginning of the video? Um, this is going to come into play in a big way in a later video. So we want to make sure that we make this as easy as possible. So what we need to do now is set up an SSH key. And what an SSH key is, is basically a stand-in for your password. It will take the place of your password so that you don't have to enter a password every time you log into the server. It's a way for your server to identify your computer and say, okay, yeah, this computer's a good guy. We can let him in. So what we're going to do now is open a new tab. As you can see, I've got a new tab open here. And this is just on my local machine now instead of on the server. So what we want to do is change directory in the command line which is CD, and we want to go to the tilde, um, that's just your home directory, slash dot SSH. Now we are in the SSH folder, we just want to see what files are in here. So we type ls, um, and we've got a config file, we've got known hosts files, which tells you that I have used this computer for SSH before, um, but there are no keys currently present. What you're looking for is a file called idrsa. Um, it can be called something different, but generally that's what you're looking for. Since there isn't one, we are going to create one. And the command to create a um, SSH key is a little bit more complicated than anything we've done um, in this video. And it doesn't have to be as complicated as I'm going to make it. But if you do it the way I'm going to tell you to do it, this key will be pretty, um, pretty robust and you can use it with most services that require an SSH key, like GitHub and Keybase and um, Bitbucket, all those all those guys require a certain level of encryption. So we're going to make sure that this key has that level of encryption. So we're going to type ssh-keygen-trsa. Um, that is telling it what type of key to create. Then we're going to do dash b4096. That's telling it the encryption level. And then we're going to do dash capital C. And I am going to enter my email address. You can enter your email address. All right, guys, so that's the command you type. Um, to get this going. This email address is just a comment. It doesn't actually do much except help you identify the key later on. Um, so we're going to press enter. Now it asks what file to save it in. Um, this is the default path. If you don't already have a key here, then just go with the default path. Now it asks for a passphrase. This is not technically required, although I highly recommend you do it um, because it just makes your key a lot more secure. And oftentimes this password get, will get cached, so you rarely have to enter it anyway. So once you've entered your password, it won't show any input here. Um, then you just press enter and it asks you for the same passphrase again and it will give you this bit of gobbledygook. Um, this is just to kind of verify that your key was successfully created. And now if we type ls again, um, it'll show you there's the idrsa file and the idrsa.pub file. And those two, those two files are going to be very important for us moving forward. Now that we have these two files created, uh, what we want to do is this is actually your private key. This is the key you don't want anyone to know about. No one needs to see this key except for your computer. This one, on the other hand, is your public key. That's what the .pub stands for, is public. This key you can give to anyone or anything to identify your computer. So this public key is what we want to upload to our server. So I'm going to first switch back to the tab that has my SSH access in it. 
and then I'm going to check if the SSH folder exists on the server. Um, this process is going to be fairly similar to what we just did um, on our on our local host. So first we check for that folder, um, use the tilde .ssh. You can hit tab to see if it will autocomplete. If it does, that means that folder exists. Um, if, this dis if this didn't exist, then you would just cd to the tilde and you'd use mkdir, make directory is what that stands for, and just do .ssh and that would create a folder for you in that spot. Um, but since I already have one, I'm just going to ssh or I'm going to cd into it, cd ssh. Now what we want to do is we want to create a file that will hold all of the trusted public keys. And that file is called authorized keys. We can, we can do ls to see what files are in here. You can see I've already got one. But to create one or to overwrite the one that I already have, you can just use touch authorized keys and that will create that new file for you. Now that we have that file created, all we have to do is copy the public key into this file. There are a bunch of different ways you can do this. Um, it can copy and pasting in the command line can be a little bit tricky. So I prefer to directly copy it over from your local machine. So I'm going to switch back to my local machine. I'm still in the SSH folder and we need to first run a command that will copy the contents of this pub file. So I'm going to use the command cat cat id rsa and make sure you use the public key and then what we want to do with that is this is going to give us the contents of that file and what we want to do is we want to pipe it into another command that will essentially copy it into that authorized keys so we can daisy chain two commands together by using a pipe character so if we do pipe like this it will um, take the results of this command and copy them into the next command so the next command we will use ssh to actually upload this key so we'll go ssh example.com at example.com and this will be of course the username and url that you have just been using for ssh and then after this, we want to use a single quote and use the cat command again, and this command here. And then we want the path to that authorized keys file. So we'll do dot ssh slash authorized keys. And don't forget to finish it off with a single quote. Now, if you run that and you've got all of the commands exactly right, including your username and URL, then that will successfully copy your public key over into your server. So if that succeeded, then your authorized keys file will now have your key in it. And it's possible that your SSH might work without a password now. You can give it a shot if you want to, but there is one more thing we have to do in order to make sure that our SSH key works. And that is we just have to make sure the permissions for those files that we just created um, are correct so that your key is actually accessible to the system. So we're going to do basically the same thing on both our local host and on the server. We're going to use a command called chmod, which modifies the permissions on certain files and folders. And first we want to change the permissions on the SSH folder to 700. So I'm going to just use the absolute path and do tilde .ssh. And then we will do and and, which means we'll run another command, which will also be chmod and we will change the permissions on the actual files themselves to 600. And we'll do tilde .ssh, and then we'll just use a star to change all of the files inside this folder. Run that command, and the permissions should be good to go on your end. Now we have to switch back to the server in the tab again, and we'll run something very similar. Um, we'll just do change mod 700 for the folder, double ampersand, and we'll do chmod 600 for tilde.ssh slash authorized keys. All right, now your permissions should be all set up. Now I'm going to exit out of my SSH and I'm going to try to just log in without using a password. So I'm going to use my shorthand S server. Boom, I'm in, no password required. And that is the magic of having an SSH key set up. You are literally one command away from logging into your server at all times. It's super quick, super painless. Um, and setting it up really isn't isn't that bad once you've done it a few times. If you want to set up an alias like I did, then you can get into your server um, after running just a single command. It just makes it super easy and quick um, and 
I highly recommend setting up SSH keys for all of your servers. Now this is just the first step in building a professional development workflow. Um, a lot of people who use shared hosts do not have a professional development workflow. Um, they have something that kind of works most of the time, um, and we want to build something that works all of the time and is just effortless and painless, and that's what we're going to be working on um, with upcoming videos, and this is just the first step. Hopefully you'll join me next week on this road to optimize our development workflows. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button below. It helps more than you know. And remember, guys and gals, never stop learning. I'll see you next time. Bye!